All right. Um, this is kind of a proof of concept uh, for some people who said that they didn't believe that this could be done. Although many people who have done it, um, I haven't done it. So, uh, yeah, now I've done it. Okay, so basically what I've done today is I've taken an air conditioner. Um, this is kind of weird with this camera backwards. And I have made it PC controlled, as you can see here. I think, yeah. Um, it actually runs through a USB cord right down through there. It comes up and it runs through a microprocessor. So, um, yeah. Um, let me go ahead and switch views on this camera so that I can uh, better show you with the camera. Since I don't need to be really be, need to be in front of it. So, um, and I'll show you some of the things I've done and why I've done it and what I actually plan to do with it uh, once it's all finished. Like I said, this is just more of a uh, proof of concept, just to prove that it could be done. Um, this is not what my end result's going to be, but this is a stepping stone along the way. Uh, this is after about four and a half, uh, probably closer to five hours of just reverse engineering the original motherboard so that I could take over the motherboard and manually control it via my PC. Um, the PC is controlling it right now, like I said. Um, inevitably, though, um, the Arduino, which is what I'm currently using, it's a, uh, it's a Nano with a 328p AT Mega. Uh, I guess Mega isn't accurate, but it's an AT320. Yeah, I guess it's Mega. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> you know what the processor is if you don't look it up. Um, um, but it's a Nano. It's a version 3 uh, on pretty good chip, low power, um, USB capabilities via the FTDI chip. So let me switch over to the other view, and we'll go through this thing a little bit more, and I'll show you it in operation, shall we? All right. Okay, so um, starting with the, uh, well, let's, let's, in fact, let's just go into, go into the uh, what it is I'm working on. This is obviously an air conditioner, um, which has the cover off of it. It's over there on the ground right now. Um, so I could get to all the wires and stuff. Most of these air conditioners don't have very good wiring schematics. They do, however, give you a little bit of what they call a uh, wiring diagram, which is not great because it kind of tells you what wires and colors plug into the motors, which is good, um, thank God. Um, but they don't give you any kind of pinouts or anything for the microprocessor. And I guess why would they? Because they don't want you to do anything on your own. They want you to buy a new one. Um, so, first and foremost, uh, this is a... Uh, Let's see if this will zoom in. It's a uh, a Danby Silhouette. Uh, the model number is really unimportant because most ACs are the same. Um, you can see what my first attempt was. I actually tried to take the original panel out, extend it through a old parallel cable, and you know, and come back to the connectors again. Um, that did not work so out so well. I guess the uh, low voltage over like 10 feet of cable. I uh, got too much corruption and it just wigged out. It would do something different every time I plugged it in and it would never operate or turn on. So that was an epic fail. I um, decided to go back to the drawing board and figure out a new way. Um, so what I basically have done now is, uh, just in today alone, I decided uh, this time what I would do is I actually took the original motherboard out of the AC unit and using what pinouts was available, I was able to deduce what wires did what. And just by tracing the uh, traces underneath the uh, board, I was able to make out what relays correspond to what motor and all of that wonderful jazz. So um, what I really did was unpopulate, after I figured all that out, I actually took the original microprocessor off the board by desoldering it and taking off all the resistors. You can see where all the resistors are now empty. Um, and then that's where in the uh, transistors that also used to control the old display. I've taken all those out. You can see where the old plugs and stuff used to be. You can see the holes. That's where all the plugs used to be for the old uh, panel. I've taken all those out and uh, via reverse engineering where all the pins were for the original micro microprocessor, I've actually just replaced them with my own. Um, that is, it actually turned out to be a lot easier than I expected um, simply because like all of the relays, um, and that's the main relay right here for the, uh, yeah, this thing's really focusing bad. This is for the the uh, compressor itself. It's a big, huge freaking relay, and all these are down here 
or just for the uh, motor fans. And uh, this one here actually has a swivel vent, which is automatically uh, turned on by the uh, panel that has a little motor inside that makes it go back and forth, which is pretty much pointless for what we're using it for. But I was able to control it. So uh, this thing here just basically had a micro a microprocessor that just turned on a um, a relay driver, which in this case it is not focusing in, but it's that chip right there. Yeah, there you go. You can see it. It's, it's just a ULN 2003. Um, it's a Darling array. Um, you can look them up. They're dirt cheap. But I've used them before, and I was like, oh, this is going to be absolutely cake. Because basically, what happens is your 110 comes in, or, or runs through this block here, which is also a relay, and then um, feeds the transformer. This particular transformer um, converts the 110 or 120 into 14 volt, which is what actually all of the AC motors inside of this device run on, and with the exception of the uh, compressor. The compressor runs on a full 120 or 110. So, uh, but being as uh, it runs the 14 volt through the, uh, on the, on the ULN 2003, which is what it uses to turn on the relays and also run the AC motors, um, on the logic side of that driver, it's just turned on by the, um, on, on, on the digital pins of the microprocessor, or did. Which you can see here, I've actually just put in headers and I've attached my own wires, which I will inevitably build my own PCB board to plug into those. Um, upon further investigation with the, uh, the oscilloscope, I noticed that what it also had on board, which it had to have had because it was digital, was it has a really nice... Uh, um, um, diode array, which is what these are right here, um, into a full wave rectifier or running through a, a set of capacitors to get a nice DC wave. So it converts that 14 volt AC into a 14 volt DC. And then, actually, let me grab this flashlight. Uh, there is a uh, nice uh, um, 7850 a voltage regulator sitting right there. Which, which, so that gives me a straight 5 volts. I actually. Uh, uh, with all the capacitors and stuff on board, I pull out the oscilloscope and check the 5 volt where the microcontroller used to be. Man, this thing puts out a smooth 5.01 volt. You can't ask for better than that. That is Arduino perfect. So I've actually used that to control the board. Okay, so all that being covered, um, I think I pretty much covers everything. I've actually installed a, uh, a Fermata firmware onto the Arduino which gives me a live operating system so it's basically a real-time operating system um, right now that's just for manual ability so that I can test all the pins and stuff without having to have it automated but since I have all the pins stuff worked out now I can automate it you know with ease um, inevitably what I'm going to do is not actually control it this way I'm actually going to put a wireless module on this Arduino and it's going to be all hidden up inside and then I'm going to have a second Arduino I'm out into the room, which are actually send wireless signals to this one as a slave, or uh, to it as a master, to this unit, which will be a slave, and to activate all the various functions. Um, this one here did have two thermistors, which are used for temperature sensing. They're basically, on uh, um, like a resistor that changes value whenever it gets hotter or colder, in case you didn't know. This one here actually had two. It has one that's called a, uh, which is labeled on the motherboard. This one here has a pipe temperature sensor and an intake temperature sensor. I am going to be reusing the pipe temperature sensor so I can keep track of how cold the compressor is getting my intake pipes. I am, however, I'm not going to be putting the air intake the air intake temperature sensor back on because it's going to be installed into the master control device, which will be on the other side of the room. Um, I think that'll be a better implementation of the uh, temperature so that uh, the room will actually be um, much. It'll be better regulated, you know, with the room temperature versus what is being pulled in in the area of where the uh, cold air is coming out. So let's just show you this thing working. Uh, and enough of me talking, shall we? Okay. So everything's on. I'm pretty sure it's plugged in. So um, I figured out which pins did what. So let's just start off. And uh, the first one here is low fan speed. And uh, turn that one off. The next one is medium fan speed. And then the last one is high fan speed. Now, uh, 
can't really show you both at the same time. Maybe I can. Uh, this one is the uh, swinging vents. I'm, I'm saying I can see the vents start to move. Sweet. Okay, and we'll leave all that on. And then lastly is the compressor. Now you hear the compressor kick on. All controlled via USB. It's a USB air conditioner for now. Um, there's a lot of things with the controlling an air conditioner that I've learned along the way. Um, and then go ahead and turn all this off so it doesn't make much noise. So, um, a few of the things that I've learned along the way is just the uh, fact that. Uh, like, for one, I didn't know that air conditioners... Well, I guess I kind of knew, but, like, there's a certain time limit for how long the compressor can stay on and how long the compressor needs to stay off once it's been turned off. I guess this is due to um, this, some kind of, like, equalizing of the pressure. And if you try to turn it back on before the pressure inside is equalized, you'll blow a overload protection uh, circuit, which will, which will then have to be unplugged in order to reset that. Um... I don't know for sure exactly what the uh, l longest the air uh, longest the compressor can turn on for, as this one here really didn't have that. I, I learned the uh, three minute shutoff rule through the user manual, which is you know for the front panel control. They're like, don't change the settings and if you turn it off. Don't turn it back on for three minutes, or you'll blow a fuse and you'll wig out and your house will burn down. No, not really, but. Um, so I'm talking a lot. What else haven't I covered? Oh, I'm I'm going to use the uh, pipe sensor to to actually uh, tell me when the AC needs to be or the AC pump needs to be shut off because basically since this thing here is going to be remote, this thing here is going to be remote mounted in an attic where you can't have access to it with uh, vents coming off to cool a uh, a room. So basically because it's for a music studio. Um, and the whole point of this is to remote mount the air conditioner where the sound of the air conditioner can't be heard. Um, and being as it's digitally powered and it'll be remotely powered, it'll be able to turn the fan speeds down to virtually nil when there's recording going on and turn it back up to full power when the recording stops. It, and all of that to keep the customers happy so they're not sweating on top of, re on top of ruining the recording time because it's making too much noise. Um, I think I've covered everything. If not, I'll add it in the notes. If you have any questions, let me know. All right, this is Nathan with Sobe Source signing off.